Hi guys, how's it going? My name is Helena and this is a complete beginner's guide to stargazing. In this video, I'll be covering everything you need to know to appreciate and enjoy the wonders of the night sky from wherever you are, no matter your equipment or your experience. The night sky, after all, is for everyone. So what are we actually seeing when we look up into the night sky? So if you've ever been to a relatively dark location during the evening and you've looked up, you will have seen an unimaginable number of bright stars in the sky. And these stars are within the galaxy that we live in called the Milky Way. They may appear so close, but they are actually quite far away. As when we're looking at these stars, we're looking at what they looked like thousands and thousands of years ago, as their light has taken so long to reach Earth. So stargazing, you might say, is the ideal hobby for Doctor Who fans, as when you look up, you're essentially looking into the past and time traveling. That's given you a little bit of a brief on stargazing in case you haven't heard of it before or aren't familiar with the term. And people enjoy stargazing and the hobby in many different ways. Some people like to look through binoculars and telescopes to see the objects more close up. And I myself, I'm an astrophotographer, so I actually like to take photos of these objects in the night sky. The reason people use telescopes and binoculars and equipment like this is basically in simple terms to see the object more close up and in more detail. However, the beauty of stargazing is that you don't need any of this fancy equipment or budgets blown out of the water to do it. You can use two very, very important and underappreciated lenses that you already own. Your eyes! <laughs> now you might be thinking, Helena, that's all very well, but how do I actually find these objects in the night sky? And it's a really good question, and it's probably one of the most difficult things that you're gonna have to do within stargazing, but it's simple if you know how. Method number one, being able to identify different constellations in the night sky. Now, you may have already heard the term constellations before clicking on this video, but if you haven't, that's totally fine. I'm just about to explain what they are. Constellations are groups of stars in the night sky that join together to make up specific shapes or represent specific objects. Looking at them, the stars do appear to be relatively close to each other to make up this specific pattern, but actually it varies quite a lot. Some stars can be a lot further away from other stars and some stars can also be quite close by. A good way to study specific constellations and remember the names and the shapes, more importantly, of these constellations in the night sky is with a star chart. And star charts are so, so underrated in astronomy, but they're so, so helpful for what we're wanting to do. Star charts are essentially a map of the stars in the sky and show you which stars appear where depending on the time of year. I definitely started out with a much more simple star chart to this as this one's actually used frequently by professional astronomers to identify objects in the night sky but it gives you an idea of what they look like and once you become familiar with them you'll be surprised when you go out how quickly constellations jump out at you. A really neat astrophotography accessory that you can use to point out different objects in the night sky to family and friends, to point to different constellations, or to draw out shapes in the night sky to remember the shapes of the different constellations is a laser pointer. Now, laser pointers can be used for a variety of different things and I personally use one to polar align in astrophotography as I have to align all of my equipment with the North Star for it to track properly. But you don't have to worry about that at all yet because you can use the laser pointer just for specifically pointing to different parts of the sky. Me recommending laser pointers does come with a little bit of a warning. Obviously don't point them directly towards you or in your eyes and you're not allowed to use them near airports or anywhere where aircraft may be flying. It's basically the same rules that apply with drones but if you're a younger person, make sure you have an adult with you to use it. As you start to use these things more, you will start to feel things click into place and you will be able to identify objects without a star chart, which is what I found when I first got into astronomy. It can be quite daunting to start with, but take it in bite-sized chunks. Say one night you're gonna observe this region of the sky, one night you're gonna observe the next region of the sky. And before you know it, there's a whole patch of sky that you know the stars off by heart. The second method, and probably one of my favorite methods to use, 
is the electronic version of a star chart, a virtual star chart on an Android or iOS application on your mobile phone. There are various different apps, both available for Apple and Android. There are loads of different versions, so don't worry, no matter what kind of phone you have, you're gonna be able to get a star chart application on it. One of my favorite ones that I use on an Apple iPhone is Skyview. A really neat feature that I love about Skyview is being able to hover over certain constellations with your phone. What Skyview does is it recognizes the constellation and it joins the dots for you and makes the image. So referring back to what I was talking about earlier about constellations representing different objects or shapes in the night sky, Skyview builds up these shapes for you which makes them so much more recognizable the next time you go to them. Now some physical copies of star charts like I was talking about in the previous method do show planets and do show the Milky Way but some don't and it's kind of a hit or miss sometimes and what I love about Skyview is it brings all of the objects in the night sky together in one application for you to find. So to search for say a star in Skyview, let's say Polaris which is the name for the North Star, you're going to want to go up to the search bar and type Polaris and it will come up with an arrow and guide you to it yourself as you move. And you can do this for planets and the core of the Milky Way, certain deep sky objects and different constellations. Not only does it take you to the objects, but it also shows you the path that they're going to take through the sky from the time that you found them. So on the left hand side of the object, the solid line, that's the path it's already taken up to that moment in time. And on the right hand side, on the dotted line, that's the path that it's still got to take through the night until morning. Now moving away from methods now, you'll notice that if you go out stargazing frequently at different times of the year, you'll see that different constellations appear at different times of the year and they don't always stay the same, they're forever changing. If you guess this, you guess correctly because this means that constellations are seasonal and certain constellations are better seen in certain seasons as we are in that patch of sky as we're orbiting around the sun. All year round there are a wide range of different constellations to see in the sky but in spring from late March to late June some main ones to look out for are the Plough, Leo and Cancer. In summer which runs late June to late September you can expect to see Cassiopeia, Draco and Cepheus. In autumn which runs from late September to late December you can expect to see Andromeda, Pisces and Aquarius among others. And in winter, which runs from late December to late March, you can expect to see the constellation Orion. Not just Orion, there are many others, but Orion is my favourite and I feel like you needed a highlight. Orion is filled with different nebulous regions in space, which is why it's one of my favourites as I do astrophotography and take photos of these nebulas. But bringing it back to stargazing, the Orion Nebula, which is in the sword of Orion's constellation, is visible with the naked eye in a dark sky location. Portal 1 to 2 skies, you can expect to see a small fuzz below Orion's belt and Orion's sword, and that is the Orion Nebula. And that blows my mind every time I say that, that you can see, we can see a nebula with our naked eye. So the final section of this complete beginner's guide to stargazing is location. So in other words, can you appreciate the night sky from a city location under heavy light pollution and the simple and unfortunate answer is no as due to the heavy light pollutions in cities for observational astronomy anyway being able to see anything in the night sky even extremely bright planets and stars is a challenge within the hobby of astrophotography which is taking pictures of the things that i've mentioned in this guide to stargazing which i'm not going to be covering today you can use things such as light pollution filters which completely block out light from sodium lamps and street lights and just focus on the light that you're wanting to capture from the deep space objects in your image. But to do visual astronomy and truly appreciate the night sky, it is best to get out to a dark sky location. The darker the location, the better in simple terms. However, it doesn't have to be completely dark as some light pollution levels are worse than others and some are better for observing the night sky. And this is measured in the Bortle scale of light pollution. 
Bortle 1 being a lovely crisp clear dark sky site away from all light pollution sources and 10 being in the middle of a city centre. If you can get out to Bortle 1 to 3 skies that is absolutely super but anywhere between 1 and 5 is really really workable for stargazing. I really hope you found this video helpful and that you've enjoyed it and it's hopefully inspired you to get out and enjoy and appreciate the night sky. Until the next one, this has been Helena with Kielder Observatory and I hope to see you back here very soon. Until then, clear skies.